Welcome to the Herdinky Pop Culture Watch Moments of the Year 2022 edition. Uh, I'm Malika Crawford. And I'm Nora Taylor. And this is not just a celebration, it's also a competition. <gasps> we'll be putting eight iconic moments up against each other in a bracket, and one will emerge victorious. What do they win, Malika? They win a day with me. Ooh. <laughs> and the love and support of the Hidinki community. Aww. Let's begin, shall we? My contestants are Zoe Kravitz as an Omega ambassador, Serena retiring in an Audemars Piguet, the Cartier crash becoming an auction darling, and the Tiffany Nautilus. I already feel like I'm winning. I have Jerry Seinfeld in the kid campaign wearing a Breitling chronomat. I have mm, Lewis Hamilton wearing more than one watch on both wrists. I have the Pharrell Jupiter auction, son of the Pharaoh, and I have the moon swatch. We are doing this bracket style, so we have eight contestants, or moments actually, that will be pinning against each other going from eight to four to two to one winner. Things are gonna get heated, but I think we can all agree, we all win. Well, speak for yourself. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm just gonna go straight in with Jerry Seinfeld for Kid. He broke the internet on September 7th with a uh, interesting kind of look, don't you think, Nora? It was a surprise, for sure. Um, so Kith, the oh. infamous powerhouse of streetwear, they've been doing this kind of collab work with you know New York celebrities for a while. I think Steve Buscemi did a campaign, but this one really, oof, this really got me worked up. Uh, I know I'm supposed to talk about the watch, but... Uh, <laughs> I mean, Jerry Seinfeld wearing uh, sweatpants. Tight sweatpants. <laughs> what do we think? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so do we think Breitling is going to have a revival courtesy of Jerry? Probably not. Maybe. Maybe. I think it was also interesting because he is such a known watch guy. Mm, yeah, exactly. I mean, we were all kind of honing in on the watch. Well, those of us who were uh, being responsible that day. But I, <laughs> it got 300,000 likes. That's a lot of likes. That is a lot of likes. Yes. So I am bringing to the table, this seems unfair. I'm putting our guy, Jerry, up against the coolest, chicest, most beautiful person in the world. Zoe Kravitz became an Omega ambassador in May. She was wearing an Omega constellation. But Zoe kind of sits in this interesting spot of like, Elder millennials love her. Yeah. People who watch Big Little Lies, moms love her. And then like a younger group of folks like her. So she was such an interesting choice for Omega because she's also impossibly chic. I mean, she's just really, really, really beautiful. Really beautiful. Yeah. I mean, daughter of Lisa Bonet and Lenny Kravitz. You would expect nothing less. <laughs> exactly. So these two are facing off against each other. Yeah, very different though. Very different. And what are each of them bringing to the wider pop culture sort of situation, do we think? Because even though I'm supposed to be batting for Jerry, mm -hmm. for obvious reasons, um, it's pretty interesting the way that brand ambassadors, in my opinion, kind of do work, mm -hmm. especially for a younger generation, maybe. Yeah, like I think it draws in a kind of fashion and style conscious audience that could be exactly who you want to put the Constellation Quartz in front of. Exactly. I know this is mine, and I love Zoe, and I love Omega, but I'd say this is almost a better business move, whereas your beloved Jerry. My beloved Jerry, I think, just happened to be wearing his Breitling chronomat that day, and mm -hmm. it probably looked pretty damn good on set. And yeah. I don't think it was a strategic move, but it certainly got people talking. I think our guy Jerry deserves to move forward. Your guy Jerry. I'm a Larry David girl. Ew, Larry David? <laughs> oh my god. Okay, Jerry Seinfeld is winning. Sorry, Aww, Zoe. Sorry, Zoe. Next up, I am talking about the goat. Serena Williams, ever heard of her? Um, she retired this year, much to our chagrin, but on her last match, she wore an AP Royal Oak Offshore Quartz, and she wore it sometimes tucked over a sweatband, and I am, unlike Malika, pro watches over your cuff, so I thought it was a super strong look. She's been an AP ambassador since 2014, so I think we all kind of were expecting her to wear an AP. She wears AP watches all the time, on the red carpet, in migraine commercials. Like she, <laughs> is, 
they look great on her. So I think it was just a really fitting moment where all eyes were kind of on Serena, all eyes were on tennis in that moment, and she wore this gorgeous watch that was quartz. And I do not know how I am supposed to compete with Serena. You can't. But here I Nobody am. Nobody could. With my other king, Lewis Hamilton. <laughs> Lewis Hamilton, come on Talking Watches. Oh, please, we love you, Lewis. I uh, had the chance to meet Lewis earlier this year and I think I have never been so nervous. Understandable. But it was that fateful day, or I think it was the day before the F1 authority decided to announce a pretty stupid safety rule in my opinion. No jewelry must be worn during the race for safety measures. Uh, and Lewis, he was not having it. And he decided to pile on all his jewels and put on all his IWC watches for a press conference. Ugh, luxurious bad boy. He's a luxurious bad boy. And what we love about Lewis is that he's quiet, but powerful, mm. silent, but deadly. You know what I'm saying, Nora? Mm -hmm. And if looks could kill, woo. He has been a brand ambassador for IWC since 2013, and he had his big pilot, big pilot Top Gun Mojave Desert, and he was wearing another chrono Mercedes edition that I think came out during that Miami Grand Prix. And I just think in general, he got people talking about the whole, I mean, there were so many pictures of him everywhere wearing those three watches. Yeah. Yeah. And he is very cute. Can't discount that. <laughs> exactly. So who, oof, this, this is, is, this is a tough. I didn't expect this to be so hard. I know. Uh, okay. Who's going forward? I think our history making AP ambassador. Yeah. I Serena think Williams. it's got to be Serena. I feel like all I'm doing is talking about people I have crushes on because <laughs> up next we have the man who never ages. It's Pharrell Williams Woo! and his Jupiter Son of a Pharaoh auction, which happened October. It was uh, provenance Pharrell Williams only, which is quite a catch. Uh, and uh, I went to take a look at the, I think it was four APs. Mm -hmm. uh, there were two skeleton perpetual calendars, pretty, pretty hot too. Wow. There were two AP concepts, Ooh. one of them a pièce unique. Then we have two G-Shock X bait collabs iced out by the man himself, Jacob and Co. Ooh. That's like a cultural touch piece. You get Bape, you get Jacob, you get everything in a G-Shock. I mean, I'm sorry, but that is a very important piece of history. Yeah. And what was cool about these watches, Nora, is that they were pretty visibly worn. They weren't just like, oh, you know, I gave you my watches that have been sitting in their boxes for, mm -hmm. you know, they were like important watches that Pharrell definitely wore. And they were scratched up and probably had a few remnants of sweat sweat droplets on them, but hey. Added value. Added value. So again, pretty great way to get watches into the zeitgeist, don't you think? Yes, agreed. Very cool. I am talking about auctions once again and sort of the cross-pollination between auctions and style and particularly stylish men. Um, I'm talking about Ye old Cartier Crash, which has not only broken auction records, but has become kind of a pop culture fashion staple, courtesy of uh, our guy Tyler, the creator. Another hottie. Also worn by Kim K, and the person who I would say is arguably the greatest like music to watches, conduit, icon, whatever, Jay-Z. Um, so the crash sold for 1.65 million in May, which is double the last time it was auctioned. And you have to think that that couldn't have happened in a vacuum, that it was just like watch nerds putting the price up, I think sort of the greater cultural conversation around it sort of lent um, to that that price going up, which is good to see, I think. It's one of those watches as well that everybody recognizes now. Mm -hmm. Like if you see a picture of it on Instagram, it always has so many likes. People just love a crash. Like mm -hmm. people who don't care about watches will comment on pictures of a crash. Because it's one of those few watches that you look at and you're just like, how? Yeah. It's how just, did you do that? How? This? It's just a great piece of design and I think it makes people who are outside of the community quite curious. Mm -hmm. You know what? Yeah. I'm gonna call it for me. Pharrell, we'll see you next year. Aww. Oh no, we love Pharrell. Yeah. More Jupiters to come. More yeah, rings and of more Jupiter. Richard meals in your Jupiter auction, thank you. 
This is the last one and the one that I think everyone is waiting for. I am talking about the Tiffany Nautilus and you are talking about... Oh yes, Moon Swatch. Moon Swatch. My watch moment first hit the scene in December 2021, mm. but the hype continued on into 2022. And it was sort of an unstoppable start to the year with the 5711 Tiffany Nautilus. It was that gorgeous Tiffany blue. Terry Stern was like, last one ever. And then the initial buyer fell through. So the person who ended up with the watch, who's Zach Liu, got it as sort of like a, hey, do you still want this? Um, so very high drama, beautiful watch, huge amount of money for a good cause. Um, and yeah, I think it was sort of all anyone could talk about to the chagrin of some folks and to the excitement of others for months, months. That watch was so hyped and it got a lot of bad press. It did. Yeah. And I think it's actually, when it comes down to it, a very beautiful watch. I think that Tiffany blue dial is actually mm. stunning. And I think that sort of the hype and rarity of it did it a disservice, but Agreed. you could say that about a lot of watches these days. You could, you could. And I really just think this is absolutely no competition, Nora. Moon Swatch released back in March of this year, which uh, feels like an eternity ago. Surely but probably the most monumental event of the year, hands down, just saying. This was a collaboration between Omega and Swatch, both part of the Swatch group. And this saw a Speedmaster Moonwatch turned into kind of a bioceramic watch that's $260 and kind of looks like it came with a Happy Meal. <laughs> you took the words over right out of my mouth. No, it is pretty cool though. So there are 11 versions of this watch, uh, all based on sort of a celestial body. We've got the moon, the sun, mission to Mars, mission to Jupiter. I could name them all, but we don't have enough time. Jupiter spelled with a U. Jupiter spelled with a U. And they cause quite the frenzy. Uh, so Omega and Swatch had a little teaser come out and uh, there were people sleeping on the streets. Like this was a Louis Vuitton Supreme drop. <laughs> Um, wow, and I think you want to say watch culture permeating the wider, broader cultural Truly. hemisphere, this is it. And people who like watches, people who don't know anything about watches, people who don't care about watches were all lining up to buy this watch. And uh, quite a few of them landed on eBay, which was interesting. I was monitoring a lot of that. I think it ranged from something around $1,500 to many thousands of dollars Dang. for a $260 plastic, sorry, bioceramic <laughs> watch with a battery. Interesting. Truly. I think it was also very interesting because I feel like watch people are used to drops, sneaker people are used to drops, but like the wider culture doesn't get to participate in like a camping out, like nobody does that for an iPhone anymore. So it was kind of fun to see everyone return to a general like beanie baby frenzy of like <gasps> standing in line. <laughs> Beanie babies. Beanie babies. <laughs> um, uh, that's the the swatch watch I need. Um, I was sort of standing in line and waiting for something that everyone could be excited about too. Yeah, and you know, hats off to them creating a product and the watch space for two hundred and sixty dollars that created that much frenzy. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. Yeah. And I love that it was just a super accessible, pr well, I mean, price-wise, it was super accessible. We're still waiting for them to pop up online. Yeah. Uh, and I, yeah, it really just permeated the whole sort of wider zeitgeist. Yeah. All right, I love to win, but in this moment, I'm happy to lose. I'm gonna give you the moon swatch. I mean, I think I deserve it, don't you? I do. I think I do, and I think it's the clear winner. Now we're here with our final four, which is on my team, Serena in the AP and the Cartier crash. And on my team, Jerry Seinfeld with his Breitling chronomat and the moon swatch. Ooh. All right. I think we put Serena and Jerry up next to each other since yes. they're personality based. Totally. Ooh. This is a toughie. Listen, I just, as much as I love Jerry and as funny as I think that whole thing was, it would kind of be a disservice to Serena to let Jerry win this one. You know what? I think you <laughs> might be right. Mm, I'm gonna say bye bye Jerry. Bye bye Jerry. Bye bye Jerry, sorry. All right, so now we have Moonswatch versus Cartier Crash. We're doing Moonswatch. Yep. Right, okay. Goodbye. Bye. Ciao. Ooh. 
Serena versus the Moon Swatch. Final round. Fight. Okay, so let's really get down to the facts because we're talking about watches in pop culture.、Mm -hmm. And as much as we love Serena, I don't think any tennis fan woke up the next day and was like, "I must know what was on her wrist." Not any, but not as、yeah. many as the layperson. Yeah, I mean, listen, Serena retiring is a big deal. Huge. But the moon swatch got everybody talking about watches,、mm -hmm. and whether you like them or not, they were pretty splashy. Yeah. And I think、uh, I'm the winner. Great. Yeah. Okay. So congrats to me. Congrats. Con Congrats, Congrats to, to Malika and maybe the moon swatch a little bit. Oh, I didn't know there were prizes. No, this is my prize to myself. <laughs> After a banner year, the moon swatch finally wins the first ever Hodinkee Pop Culture Award. Congratulations! Yay! Yay! Happy New Year, Nora. Happy New Year.、Um, Thanks for joining us. We'll see y'all in 2023, where、uh, hopefully Lewis Hamilton come on talking watches. Yes, please, Lewis Hamilton. This is a message for you. <laughs> All for you. <laughs> My watch moment first hit the scene in December 2021,、mm. but it was such a big deal that the hype train choo chooed on into 2022. Let's cut that. It was. <laughs> We need a theme song. I know, 2022 pop culture for you. This doesn't work as well. What are your goals? I do have to go to watchmaking school. Oh, I did go to watchmaking school at 9 a.m. and you were not there. Oh, that's true. <laughs> I don't go anywhere at 9 a.m. Three, two, one. Moon swatch. Goodbye, 2022. Thank you for your watch moments, your pop culture moments, and all of those moments in between. Yes, but we welcome in 2023 and more hype collabs and Patek drama. Put Larry David in some sweatpants. Yeah, we'll see you next year, guys. <laughs> <laughs>